Hey everyone, and welcome to our adventure on the Alsace Wine Route. Join us as we journey through one of France's most picturesque regions and one of our absolute favorite destinations. The Wine Route, or Route du Vin in French, stretches over 111 miles from Strasbourg in the north to Comar in the south, winding through more than 70 stunning towns and villages. This area is a delightful blend of French and German cultures. Throughout much of its history, Alsace was an independent kingdom that spoke a version of the German language. You can still see traces of its Germanic heritage today in the architecture, cuisine, and even the family names of its residents. You're more likely to meet someone named Müller than DuPont here. Today, we're excited to take you through three enchanting villages, Igesheim, Hunevir, and Ribeville. The Alsace Wine Route is a journey of discovery where history, culture, and exquisite wines come together. These are just a few of the many beautiful spots waiting for you. So plan your visit and immerse yourself in the charm and beauty of Alsace. Let's go! Okay, so here in Igesheim, we stopped at uh, this winery Wolfberger and go inside and uh, do wine tasting. It's, it's free and you could probably taste as much wine as you want, I guess. But uh, so we tried some and we got a really good, nice, dry Riesling and then we got a nice uh, Cremant, some uh, sparkling wine. So uh, yeah, it's very nice, very friendly service and it's very beautiful inside too. So, so we went to Wolfburger because we were at a restaurant in uh, Comar uh, a few days ago and we had a bottle of wine with dinner and it was really good. And it came from this winery. So we stopped here to uh, check them out and to pick up some wine to take home with us. All right, so this is probably the most uh, photogenic, the most popular photo spot in Igesheim. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the village is shaped in a circular pattern. So this route, if you go around here, basically it just get, goes in a, a ring around the entire village. And so you walk all around, the next thing you know, you're back where you started at. And uh, with the uh, fountain in the town square right in the middle, which is just unbelievably uh, picturesque. And I, I believe this particular building was used as a model for Bell's house in Beauty and the Beast. I'm not 100% certain about that, but I have believe I've read something along those lines, but very beautiful. You just gotta stroll along the circle route and you can't get lost. And every, every turn you see something more and more cute. Okay, so Igesheim and this town is, as you may have seen, is ridiculously cute. Uh, right in the heart of the uh, Alsatian wine route. And there's great wine around here. They make uh, outstanding Riesling and also some very nice uh, Gewürztraminer. And so typically white wine and uh, Riesling is the king of the wines here. And uh, yeah, this place is, um, you know, if you think you're in a Disney movie, there's a, a good reason for that because it, it inspired, this region uh, inspired um, the scenery for the uh, movie uh, Beauty and the Beast where Belle lived. And it is just, it looks like you're in a, a I don't know, a cartoon or, or, or a chocolate box or something. Cause it's unbelievably cute and uh, it's just one of the villages along the uh, Alsatian wine route that are that are like this so yeah it's definitely it's worth a few days to come down and stay in Alsace and stay on the uh, Alsatian wine route just really really pretty uh, you have the Vosges mountains just literally right outside of town we're about 10 kilometers from Komar and probably 20, 30 kilometers from Strasbourg, I guess. So, 
Yeah, it's really nice. All right, so sometimes it's difficult to find something without a lot of meat in it when you're traveling, especially around here in Europe. But uh, we just had some great sandwiches that were um, vegetarian. They, they had cheese, of course, but lots of good vegetables. And I think one of them had maybe some fake meat on it, some vegetable meat. But anyway, they were very good. I had uh, mozzarella and pesto. We had something called a Caesar or Cesar sandwich. And yeah, they were very, very tasty. So uh, hit the spot. So recommend you stop in there and grab a sandwich when you're walking through Egesheim. It's just right above the town square in Egesheim. And the town square is like the cutest place you've ever seen. It has a really beautiful fountain dedicated to St. Leo or Pope Leo the Ninth, I believe. And then you just walk up the stairs, come inside this little church. It's nice and cool in there, which is very important on a hot summer day like today. It has beautiful stained glass windows, some very nice artwork. And up on the roof, there are four stork nests. So that's kind of cool too. So yeah, so come in here, hit the town square, dip your hand into the water, which I believe is a scene from Beauty and the Beast, if I'm not mistaken. And just check out the nice shops and do a little bit of wine tasting out there. It's too cute to be true almost. So here in Egesheim, we have like three storks up on top of their roof. And we thought they were artificial. We thought they were just there for decoration, but they're actually moving around and now they're being perfectly still, but they were moving just a few minutes ago. They certainly look like they're decorations, but uh, they were really moving, I promise you they were moving. Pretty cool, a lot of stroke nests around here. All right, so behind me is the church of St. Peter and Paul here in Egersheim. And this church was built originally in the early 1200s. Um, unfortunately, the only thing left of the original building is the bell tower, which I will show you. Uh, the rest of it was destroyed in around, around 1807, early 1800s, I think. And it was rebuilt later on in the 1800s. There's a, um, uh, a very interesting um, carving inside from the 14th century of uh, the Virgin Mary. And uh, the stained glass windows are absolutely uh, phenomenal in there so it's quite pretty and so that's the church of uh, Peter and Paul here in Egesheim. All right welcome to Hunavir here in this beautiful fountain. So Hunavir has a, a nice old medieval church, it has this pretty fountain, it has a, a butterfly park and a petting zoo and a couple of nice looking restaurants and a few wineries. That's about it. Not too big, but it is really cute. That's a nice little building and it's definitely worth making a stop as you're going along the Alsatian wine road. I'm here at the uh, church, which dates back from the 15th century, so the 1400s. It has some beautiful frescoes inside. It has a fortified wall, so I guess the church, they built that for defensive purposes of the church. Um, don't really know the history on that, but um, if you look at the clock tower, look at the clock, the hands of the clock are, uh, are a bunch of grapes and some grape leaves, so to honor the vineyards around here, and there are a lot of vineyards uh, around here. They produce a lot of grapes, and this is one of the villages that was not damaged or destroyed in World War II, so Hunavir. 
The village does not host as many visitors as neighboring towns, and it is relatively easy to stroll up and down the narrow streets without feeling lost in the crowd. Hunavir is famous in Alsace because of its fortified church, perched on a hillside on the edge of the village. The fortified church of St. James and the old cemetery are surrounded by a 13th century wall with only one entrance. The six original semicircular bastions with ports through which guns could be fired still flanked the, ramp the ramparts. The view from the church is among the finest in Alsace. All right, welcome to Ribeville, and I really apologize about my French pronunciation, but this is one of the few villages on the uh, Alsatian wine route that actually has a French sounding name. Most of them sound very German. But again, to continue your cuteness overload from medieval timber frame houses, uh, this is a great place to come. It is really beautiful, really cute. You know, and you think about how harsh life must have been when these buildings were built, and now they've been, you know, pretty up so it's really quite beautiful with the flowers and the, the paint and looking at the timber frames but so we've got this beautiful fountain and behind me um, is the Metzger term so it's named uh, has like a German name so that means butcher's tower I guess and a uh, medieval tower built in the 1200s so when this city was very important a strategic uh, strategic um, communication route um, here in Alsace and um, yeah, so you can, I think you can still climb up to the top of it, but really pretty. And the whole village, it's just, um, you know, like I said, it is cuteness overload. So when you're in France, you gotta come to Alsace, and visit the Alsatian wine route, and come to villages like this here in Ribeville. And again, my apologies for my French, thanks. Ice coffee, ice cream, coffee, whipped cream. All right, so we've been to Igesheim, Hunavir, and Ribeville on the Alsatian wine route, and all are very nice, uh, very beautiful scenery. There's the vineyards are really nice. You can hike throughout the vineyards. They all offer multiple places offering wine tasting. You can go in and try several different types of wine for free. Hopefully you buy some. Architecture is stunning. Um, very, you know, it, it's weird to think about how harsh life was in the Middle Ages and now it's so beautiful now, but really cute. Uh, we liked Igesheim um, the best. It was a little nicer, a little bigger, had a little more infrastructure support, but super cute. And you can tell uh, walking through why fairy tales were based out of these villages, why Disney based a lot of Beauty and the Beast, uh, Bell's Village off of these villages, because they're just really nice, really cute. So um, I think a great idea would be to come to the Alsatian Wine Route and spend a week here and visit different villages, because there are, are multiple that we haven't been to, and uh, some of them are, are supposed to be very nice as well. So, you know, spend a week, do, maybe rent some bicycles, do a little bike riding through the villages, do some wine tasting. There's excellent food here, and I think you wouldn't regret it. It would be a very nice holiday destination, the Alsatian Wine Route. So thanks for joining us on this tour of Alsace, and we really appreciate you being here and supporting our channel. We hope you enjoyed it, and you know, give us a like, uh, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment, let us know what you thought about it, and maybe you've been here, and what were your holiday experiences like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to, uh, so you don't miss out on any of our exciting travel content. Um, so yeah, so thanks for joining us.
And until next time, au revoir from the Alsatian Wine Route.